So, hello. I'm going to kind of dedicate this message I have today to a friend of mine, Amanda, who I spoke to yesterday, who had some questions. And um, we were having some conversations about you know, like how, how to understand God and things that are going on in the world right now. This is October 18th, 2023. Anyway, um, a lot of people want to know how to know, like, what God's doing at this time and how to, how to understand God and once you've received him. So, I want you to say this. The first thing is to getting to know God. And the first two things, they're like both equally important. Not One's not more important than the other. So, But I'm going to put them, they have to go in an order. So, I say read God's word. That's how you get to know God. And also that's how he speaks to you too. That's one of the ways he speaks to you is through his word. The Bible is a living word. He speaks through his word. Got a bug in the car. Anyway, I recommend that you get a good study Bible, uh, perhaps a life application Bible, a New King James Version, the ASV, uh, and also possibly an Amplified Bible because the Amplified will help you understand some things, like go into further, wider explanations. But that would just be an adjunct to, for instance, getting a new King James. I don't recommend you really start with the King James because it's really hard to process. I know it's hard for me to process. I didn't grow up with, grow up with it. Unless you grew up with it, it's it's really kind of it can be kind of difficult to understand his word. So read his word, read his word, and pray to Holy Spirit. Say, Holy Spirit, help me, help me to. Help me to understand the words I'm reading. And speak to me, God, through your word. Pray that before you start studying, reading and studying. And really study, though. Just read it. But just study it, meditate on it, set with it. And pray. To, pray. Talk to God. That's prayer. Talking to God. And listening. Because he speaks. He speaks in many ways. It could be a, It could be a small voice. It could be a thought that comes into your mind. Um, it could be kind of loud in your head, but it doesn't have to be. Um, much of the time, he's speaking through his word. Uh, the next thing I suggest is a church community. That's biblical. Being in community at a church. I know some people have like, oh, I can do church on my own at home. I could watch it on TV or whatever. It's great to watch it on TV if you can't get there that day, you're sick or you're out of town or whatever. But we need community. We need to encourage one another. We need to grow together. You are not going to find a perfect church. They're all human beings. They're all growing at different levels in faith, which we will do that till the day we go to be with Jesus in heaven. So don't expect perfection, but have a church community. And I would recommend that you have one that is a spirit-filled community, one that believes every word of the Bible, not just some parts of the Bible. Or that, like, you know, you don't want a church that interprets its Bible their own way, but, you know, what God says, God says. And uh, I recommend that. I recommend that, you know, like, you find a church. What I mean by spirit-filled is that they operate in, in all the gifts. They believe that healing is relevant for today, not just Jesus's time, um, or when the apostles, um, in that first century, they're not just for the first century church, they're for here and now. And he has healing for everybody. He has gifts for everybody. Gifts of prophecy, gifts of words of knowledge, gifts of, um, tongues and Praying in tongues. Praying in tongues is just simply getting a prayer language, asking the Lord for your prayer language, receive it, just like you receive salvation. You receive that, believe that you received it. And it may be awkward at first, but let me tell you, it, circ it just it totally circumvents your mind and it goes straight spirit to God. 
when you when you pray to God in your in your prayer language. It's just a direct connection where your mind doesn't get in the way, which you know our minds get in the way a lot when we pray. We are saints, not sinners. Now we're born with a sin nature and we we struggle with sin all the time. And we may fall into some sin, but not intentionally if we if we receive the Lord as our Savior, as our Lord and Savior. We are we repent from sin. Even we struggle with it, we follow into it, we repent and we turn from it. We and we turn from it. We don't wanna we don't wanna be that nature or desire us not to do that. We are saints. We are not sinners saved by grace, which you hear a lot from people. If you hear that from someone, just run the other way. We are saints. No, you don't feel like a saint. But that's what the Bible says. We are saints. Walk in it. Walk in what God has for you. And uh, I would also say that God's not a condemning God. So if you have condemning thoughts or shameful things come into your mind, thoughts, things that are attacking you, um, that's not God. We have an enemy. His name is Satan, the devil. He's real. There's a spirit world. There's a dark spirit world. There's a light. Satan's of the dark spirit world. God is of the light spirit world. You do not have to listen. And you just say, get thee behind me, Satan. Lord, pray, place your thoughts into my head and get into the Bible and read his word and his promises for your life. So I'll have more on this later on. But I just wanted to